Welcome back to Sportsline here on News Channel 5 Plus. John Burton, pleased to be joined by Coach Dave McGinnis, former NFL head coach, longtime NFL assistant, Titans assistant coach, and now the radio analyst for Titans Radio along with Mike Keith. Uh, you can hear him every Sunday or whenever the Titans play uh, on 104.5 The Zone, which is the flagship station or uh, throughout the many affiliates on the Titans Radio Network. That's so cool, man. Doing radio is, is fun because... Uh, before I came here, I actually did pit radio, pit football radio. Yes. And it was nice because not only was it in Pittsburgh, I was the pregame show host, and I also did the sidelines. And wait, 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 stop a minute. You know my man Bob Junko up there at Pitt? Yeah, oh, yeah, great guy. Now, you know Junk and I coached together at oh, TCU great. years oh, ago. Junk, junk is the, the best. The Junk Man. The, the Junk best Man of, is the best. The Junk Man helped, helped recruit Aaron Donald. Yeah. And then when we drafted Aaron Donald at the Rams, Bob Junko is one of the best human beings in the world. And uh, – that's so cool. How small yeah. is this circle of stuff we live Man, in? Man, it's unbelievable. How about you and I sitting here in a studio <laughs> in Nash, Vegas, and we're talking about Bob Junko at Pitt. All right, go ahead. I interrupted you. You're the host. No, it's all good. It's your show, man. We're here. We have a, we have a caller on the line. We're going to try and get to him. Who do we have, Taylor? All right, let's, get, let's try Roger on line one. Hey, Roger, you're on the air, I think. Hey. What's up, man? Doing? Welcome to the show. Roger, what's up, man? How you doing, Mr. McGowan? No, it's a, it's Coach Mac. Well, you don't have to. You, it's Coach Mac. You don't have to, Mr. <laughs> me. Good to hear from you, brother. Uh, What's on your mind tonight, what do you bud? Think about that. What about that win? Whenever I got picked off that pass in the end zone from the Texans. Yo, you, 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 ain't he a rookie? Yeah, you talk about Adoree Jackson's Thanks interception. Thanks for the call. Thanks for the call. Thank you. Hey, you talk about Adoree Jackson's interception. Yeah, first mm -hmm. career interception too. He's yeah, been he's been waiting for it for a long time. First career interception, and it was such an athletic play. It was such an athletic play, and 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 here's 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 what he did so well. Not only was he in great position trailing, but it takes. I mean. Timing is everything with that thing. Mm -hmm. And plus, to time it like he did, the hops that he had to get up, and then we all know that that receiver Hopkins. has well, – we all, we all know that DeAndre Hopkins has those bear trap hands. Right. It's you like Chris Carter, right? Just big, like strong Chris hands. It's like Chris Carter. Yep. It's a great analogy. And you and to, to take that away from him and then also to come down with both feet in the end zone, mm -hmm. that was a big-time NFL play by DB. And for the record, Dory Jackson is in his second year. Uh, he was one the Titans two first round picks last year along with Corey Davis let's talk about that win uh, 20 to 17 okay. over the Texans I can be honest with you coach I did not have a good feeling going into that game with all the injuries with the John crazy, why not well with all the injuries <laughs> with all the craziness of the Miami game I just didn't I just didn't have a good vibe coming in and I tell you what coach Rabel did a nice job of pulling his team together um, you know the next man up mentality and I really thought his idea of, okay, we're at home. We need to get our crowd with us early. The fake punt call, you know, Kevin Byard to Dane Crookshank, that got the crowd energized. I thought Vrabel did a masterful job coaching that game. And I tell you what, you know, of course, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be in that building every day. I'm in the building every day. I'm on the practice field every day with those guys. You could sense, even on the plane coming back from Miami, John, you could sense a uh, – feeling of resolve mm -hmm. that we had some bad things happen to us down here you know we had an eight-hour football game basically yeah. and I'm going to ask you about that later in the show I mean because I was there too that was quite okay. an experience okay so <laughs> and it's and we lose a ball game that everybody felt like you know you had a chance to win plus you lose you know you lose some some real players you know yeah. every player on the team is important but you lose you know three pretty significant players and so but you could sense that resolve. And then during the week, you could just sense, you know, from him and his coaching staff and those players in the practice, in the meeting rooms, once he started presenting his plan to them, as you watch them practice, you watch them practice, you listen to it. And, and Mike Vrabel uh, from, from jump started saying, there are no excuses. Right. We're going to find a way to get this done. Here's what we do. And let me tell you what happens. When you're a coach – and you're presented with those obstacles, and you're able to present a plan to overcome those obstacles, and your players buy into it, and then they execute that plan, and that plan is successful, there is a level of trust and a aura of confidence that builds so much off of that. And then after the game, I loved what Vrabel said, and he did what all good coaches do. Right. You know, he, he said, it's about the players. Right. And, and, and to be able to get out, in, as you said early, 
the fake punt was beautiful, but he had to put he had to put faith in Bayer sure. to be able to do that. You got a rookie out there that's a gunner, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. that you have to get it to. Mm -hmm. That worked, all right. And now all of a sudden, Houston's on their left foot. You know, and by that I mean they're they're a little bit off balance. And so then a couple of series later, you hit them with a the wildcat. They haven't prepared for the wildcat, right. and unless they have something they do every week to have a default defense to the wildcat, you're going to be over there on those pads adjusting pretty quick. But once you're doing that, you're down 14 to nothing. Right. Things have not gone like. And and again, Houston came in here thinking this is a wounded team. All right. we got to do is jump on them early. Right. You know, it'll be over. Plus they had the eight-hour game, everything. That was so big, and plus the fans were outstanding. They were great. And you said, got the fans into it, the fans are rolling, and when these fans here get going, it's outstanding. And to be able to pull that game out like they did, but to do it in an innovative way, mm -hmm. but also to do it in a way that it didn't matter what obstacles we had, here's our solutions to it. Right. Let's make it work. Right. Let's not talk about the problems. Let's talk about the solutions, how we're going to get through this. And I, I, I really... You know, you looked at the Titans' offense. They, they struggled most of the game. And then next thing you know, that allows the Texans to come back, take a lead late. But what I liked about that offense, they didn't dwell on what they weren't doing earlier in the game. They put two nice drives together. They get the field goal to tie it and then the other field goal to win it. And then, you know, they hold on uh, defensively to win it. Of course, uh, I felt Watson helped them out by scrambling around with all that time left you know in what, the game. John, Watson, you know, that was crazy with no timeouts left. Watson is a lot like, I mean, he's very similar to Russell Wilson. You yeah. know, six years I was in the NFC West with the Rams, yeah. and Russell Wilson and the Seahawks were rolling. I mean, we built a defense, you know, to, to, to try to trap that guy because uh, you have to, anytime you face a quarterback like that, mm -hmm. Whatever personnel groups they've got on the field, you've got to face that offense, and then plus you have to be able to defend the unscheduled play right. and the off-schedule play. And, and with the off-schedule play with those guys in this league, it's dangerous, especially anymore uh, when you start expanding the game horizontally like the game has and the defensive players can't touch the receivers right. after five yards. Then it becomes, I mean, you're chasing those guys around back there. You're chasing him around. It's like Rocky in the movie trying to catch that chicken <laughs> in that alley. Right. I mean, it's hard. It's really hard. I mean, as hard. a defensive coach, you can't, like you said, you can't really prepare for that because guys like Watson, guys like, you know, Russell Wilson, guys like Ben Roethlisberger, maybe not as much anymore, but certainly in his early days, right. and I was there in Pittsburgh in his yes. early days, they play, I think there's a term coaches like to use, they play beyond the X's and the O's. Yes. And it's hard to prepare for that. No, and, and here's what you do, but and, and again, the Titans did a good job because Mike Vrabel knew what they were up against. You can practice, you can practice that scramble plaster drill in practice. Mm -hmm. You know, which they do, which they do. You know, your DBs, you, you tell your scout team quarterback to move around a little bit, plaster in the back end, but once you can't simulate everything for real mm -hmm. until it gets started. And when you've got a tremendous athlete like Watson is, and plus he's got very, very capable receivers. Sure. It, it, it was a really, really big accomplishment to be able to do that. And as you said, he helped us there at the end because as soon as he crossed that line of scrimmage and backed up and I saw that clock ticking, yeah. I, I got real happy. <laughs> Uh, one one player that I thought really had an outstanding game for the Titans was rookie Harold Landry the third. I know he didn't officially register a sack, but man, he was putting heat on Watson the entire game. Hard to believe this guy didn't go in the first round, but how lucky are the Titans to be able to get a guy like Rashawn Evans in the first round and be able to get a first round talent like Landry? They had to move up a little bit, but to get a guy like that in the second round. Well, part, you know, of course, I came in. I flew in from L.A. Mm -hmm. You know, the Titans flew me in from L.A. to do the draft, you know, with, with yeah. Mike Keith and with Rhett Bryan and with Jonathan Hutton yeah. for two days, and it was outstanding. Those guys were tremendously prepared. I mean, we had a lot of fun doing Who, it. Hutton? But, no, he's yeah. not a professional. Well, we love <laughs> Hutton. Friend of show. Shout out, Jay Hutton. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so he's those the guys best. were tremendous, and we, you know, we, we really had a good good two days. And But anyway, but that's that's – luck meeting preparation because John Robinson, I'm so impressed with him as a GM. Yeah. Knowing, you know, being a general manager and working the draft is, much, is so much more than just putting names on a board mm -hmm. and then picking a name when your time comes. You've got to understand the league. You've got to understand where your needs fit with the league's needs. You've got to understand the moves people are going to make. You've got to understand where people behind you may have someone targeted. Right. That you have to, he knows how to work the it's draft. It's a chess game. It's a chess game, and, and, but you have to be very, very cognizant of it, and you have to know what you're doing. He is so dialed in. I mean, I'm so on board with John. 
John Robinson. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when he when he when he did that with Evans, it was so fired up. Now Harold Landry would not have lasted if he hadn't had the ankle injury right. his senior year, and because this guy and I've said it before, you've heard me, you and I've talked on the field about mm -hmm. it. You know, up there, there certain, and I've been with some really good pass rushers in my career. You know, Richard Dent. Simeon Rice, Javon Curse, all of those guys have an innate ability. Robert Quinn, mm -hmm. you know, when he had 19, they've got an innate ability, and it's God given to be able to, I call it the motorcycle lean, where they can yep. come, they can get off that edge and lean yep. and get that knee on the ground, but still be able to get all their cleats and that inside foot on the ground and point back to that launch point of that quarterback. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that, that, that's a gift. He's got the motorcycle lean, he's got that gift. Yeah, you've seen that from guys like, of course, Lawrence Taylor and, and, and Derek Thomas. You Absolutely. Know, I covered Bruce Smith uh, that, in, in Buffalo. He had that lead. Uh, all those, you're right, all those guys have it. A guy like Reggie White was just straight power. No, it was a power. It's different. It's right. a different type of pass rusher. Strahan was kind of an in-between, right? Yes, yeah. Strahan was in-between. But those guys has got that Gumby ability, right. you know, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and to bend themselves and get back there and then be able to, to affect the passer. And even, even if they don't affect the sack, they mm -hmm. force him up into the pocket because that backhand swiping at the ball, that's really, really important. And for him to be able to, I mean, he affect, he's affected the game. Right. You know, when he's in there. And that, that's really important because now what that helps you do as a defensive coordinator, which I've done for a few years in this league, that helps you adjust things away from him. And now if he starts being pretty proficient at it and they start having to slide a line to him or protect, then you can work some of your other games away from him. Right. All of that's very, very important. I, I was excited to see what he did. Zach, I believe, joins us on line one. Hey, Zach, welcome to the show. Well, how you doing? This is my first time. I just had a question. How much do these Titans teams stress on scripting the ball? I think that's what they're lacking a lot of scores. Zach, let me tell you something. Thanks for calling. Yeah, uh, by thanks the way, the call, Zach, Zach. Thanks for watching. Thanks for calling. Uh, you know, they work on turnovers all the time. In fact, and Jerome Casey had a strip sack in that game. Didn't yeah, he absolutely, yeah, absolutely. That was uh, caused really by Harold Landry's rush. That was caused that, by that the forced rush. forced Watson to step up, and then Casey was there to sweat the ball down. Zach, John and I were at a training camp, and we were watching. They were doing what I call a county fair drill, where they <laughs> were doing where they were doing uh, position specific drills with the whole defense. And what they would do is set each each defensive coach at a station and then rotate all of the levels of the defense through all those stations. In other words, DBs, linebackers, defensive line would go through stations and one of the stations was the strip drill. Sure. Strip drill. The other one was get your hands up, you know, to bat it down drill. Mm -hmm. The other drill was the punch out drill from behind. So they work on it specifically, very much so. This is a very well coached football team. And believe me, it's important when you come around. And let me just say this give me, I'll give you a little pointer. A lot of times coming around the edge, if you don't go for the ball and you're able to get the elbow, you can cause that thing to go forward because right. sometimes the quarterbacks are very aware of you going for the ball. They'll move the ball out of the way, but they, you can go for that elbow and you can get it to bounce. And so they work on all of it. Coach David Guinness is here. We're going to take another break and come back and talk about this Sunday's game in Jacksonville against a very good Jaguars team. Tough test for the Titans. Plus, your phone calls are welcome at 737-7767. Stay with us. We roll on here on Sportsline.